to leave LA So I got into my car and I went away to the big estate Playing poker every day Going all in with these fish like I'm mad and all you can eat buffet We're on a heater up nearly $5,000 in the last two days. We pull a LeBron and take our talents north to Thackerville, Oklahoma, home of the world's largest casino, Windstar. Check it out. inside where I've been warned by fellow vloggers how hard it is to get away with filming here but obviously if you're watching this video right now you know we did not take the L. Something interesting I've been hearing about Windstar and Choctaw is that they used to be the mecca for poker with upwards of 30 tables per night. Now because of the multi-million dollar card rooms coming in in Dallas they're lucky to get five tables a night and their managers and dealers are all flocking south as well. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the next few years. I take a seat at the 1-3 waiting for the larger 2-5 I'm in for $300. First in a note, I look down at King 10 offsuit from middle position. One limp to me and I raise it up to $15 and both the big blind and the under the gun limper both put in the call. Going heads up to the flop which comes ace four five rainbow. When the action checks to me, I think this is a good spot to go for a C bet. That's what I do. I bet out for $12 into the $46 pot. Both the opponents put in the call so we're off to the queen of hearts on the turn giving us the gutter to Broadway. The big blind and under the gun both check it over to me for for a second time. Now that we picked up some additional outs, any jack will give us the nuts. I decide to check behind and see what happens on the river. River pairs the queen, it comes the queen of clubs. The big blind now bets out for $25 and the under the gun finds a fold. Actions on me and with just king high here and a dream, we toss our cards into the middle. Not going to be picking up this pot here, but we move on to the next hand when we look down at ace five offsuit. We're in the big blind and few limps to me and I decide to just complete here instead of raising. So that brings us seven ways to the flop which comes 965 with two spades bottom pair and a backdoor straight draw sound pretty good to me I start with the check player to my left in the under the gun decides to bet out for $12 and that's gonna get two calls and the actions back onto us like I said we have a pair a backdoor flush draw any ace would probably give us the best hand as well I decide to stick in the $12 and we're off to the turn turns exactly what I was hoping for comes the ace of clubs we now have two pair I decide to go for a check raise in this spot but the action gets unfortunately check through so we're off to the river which comes the king of diamonds i now need to get value from two pairs when the king of diamond comes in so i lead out for 45 dollars hoping someone will pay me off unfortunately though all the other players find a fold we're going to take down the 69 dollars pot and we're up 15 dollars on the session quick side note really appreciate all you guys watching but what i would appreciate more is if you guys took one second scroll down and hit the subscribe button let's get to 30k by the end of the year appreciate you guys let's get into the next hand next hand pocket tens from the button and I raise it up to $15. We get called in two spots by the under the gun and the middle position player and the flop comes ace queen four with two spades. Action checks in flow over to me and I think we need to go for a c-bet here. I'll have all the ace queens, ace kings, pocket aces, pocket queens where they really can't have that when they don't decide to three bet me pre-flop. I go for a nearly half pot size bet. I bet out for $21. Both the opponents fold and we're going to take down that pot uncontested. After taking down that pot, we look down at ace king from the hijack. Action folds to me and I raise it up to $12. Both the cutoff and the small blind find a call. So going three ways in between two opponents to a flop, which comes 663 rainbow. Small blind checks to me and I decide because I'm out of position to the cutoff to check it over to him and see what he does. He leads out for $15 and the small blind gets out of the way. I think folding ace king high here would be a crime. I float, I put in the $15, just looking to see what the turn brings in. Turns gin, it comes a king. King of diamonds, bang, we turn a pair. Not gonna be leading out when the king of diamonds comes in. I check it over to the cutoff who bets out for $35. We could either go for the check call or the check raise here. I decide in the moment to go for the check call, probably meaning that I'm gonna lead out on any safe river card. I toss in the call and the river comes the jack of diamonds, $140 in the pot, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lead out into the opponent. If I check it over to him, he might just check behind. We can't have that happening. I bet out for $40, pretty small price, should get looked up by any pocket pair underneath the king or jack, but he decides to fold his cards. No worries though, we're gonna take down that $140 pot. 
We've got the jiggities on the button and I raise it up to $15. We've got the big blind and two of the limpers put in the call as well, going four ways to the flop. Flop's pretty good for us. It comes 10-5-5 with two hearts. Having an overpair here, we feel pretty confident and we expect the players to check it over to us. That's exactly what happens. All the opponents check it over to me and I bet out for $25. We only get looked up by the middle position player, so we're off to the turn. Turn seems like a bad card. It comes the ace of hearts. Obviously, it puts three hearts out there, which is not great for us. An overcard as well is a bit worrisome, but what aces does he really have in his range when he check calls the flop? He checks it over to me for a second time and I decide to check behind looking to see what the river card brings in. River comes the nine of diamonds. Luckily, it's not the nine of hearts. He checks it over to me for a third time. I debate going for another small bet here looking to get value from any 10, but I don't want to get check raised and put in a gross spot, so I decided to check behind. The opponent says he has a 10 in his hand. I believe him and turn over my jacks without seeing his cards. He mucks his cards and we're going to take down that $111 pot. <laughs> Four hundred and fifty in our stack. We look down at pocket nines from the low jack. Action folds to me, and I raise it up to twelve dollars. Player to my left in the hijack, and both the small blind and the big blind put in the call. So we're going four ways to the flop, which comes queen, four, deuce, rainbow, an overcard, and no nine on the flop is not good news for us. I decide to check my action, and the hijack leads out now for twenty-five dollars. When the small blind and the big blind both find a call here, I think we have enough odds and implied odds if we hit a nine on the turn to make this twenty-five dollar call. So that's what I do and we're still four ways to the turn. Turn comes the six of diamonds, really shouldn't change too much, although three five now makes a straight. Small blind now goes all in for $55. I fold and the hijack calls. River comes the seven of diamonds. Small blind says he missed and the hijack scoops with queen 10 of hearts. Interesting hand. We get out of the one three game for $460, so a profit of 160 and our name gets called for the two five game. The buy-in structure is 300 to 1,000. I'm in for the max. First in a note, we looked down at king 10 of spades from the big blind. Few limps to me and I raise it up to $30 and three players decide to call so we're going four ways to the flop. Flop comes jack 6-4 with one spade. When the action checks to me given the fact there's three other players in the hand I want to go for a bet here but I think better of it and decide to check my option as well. The action ends up getting checked around and the turn comes the four of spades. Now picking up a spade draw when the action gets checked to me for a second time, I go for a delayed c-bet of $55. Only one player puts in the call, that's the cutoff, we're going heads up to the river, we're going to need a king or a spade probably to have the best hand here. The river's not kind though, it comes the jack of diamonds and we're left with just king high. There's a good amount of money in the middle, $230 to be exact, and I don't want to let that go to waste, I want to bring that back into our stack, so I go for another bet here, $190. It's unlikely when he checks the flop and doesn't raise the turn that he doesn't have a jack so betting $190 here puts a lot of pressure on all his one pair type hands. If he has a six I expect him to fold. Don't really think he's gonna have a four too often so I like my $190 bet but not until he snap calls me. That's a little bit worrisome. I turn my cards face up right away. I need to see what he has here. And the opponent turns over a hand I did not expect. Three six of clubs, so he's just a non-believer. I guess his logic is it's hard for me to have a jack when I bet the flop. And then my bet on the river is very polarizing. I'd probably go a little bit smaller if I had a jack, but he's gonna take down that big pot. King 10 of spades did not work out well for us. How about ace 10 of spades from the low jack? Player to my right opens it up to $10. Ace 10 of spades is a clear three bet. I pop it up to $35. The hijack puts in the call and the player to my right puts in the call as well. We're going three ways to the flop which comes king queen eight with two spades. We have a royal flush draw. That's pretty insane. When the middle position checks it to me, I'm out of position to the hijack so I check it over to him. I think a small percentage of the time we could go for a bet here as well. We don't have a king or queen in our hand so we unblock them from having that in theirs. Hijack decides to check behind and that brings the four of diamonds on the turn. When the middle position checks it to me for a second time with just ace high here but in insane draw. We need to be putting some money in the pot. That's what I do. I bet out for $55, which gets rid of the hijack, but now the middle position has ideas of continuing. He cuts out $55 worth of red chips and we're off to the river. Gonna need a spade, an ace, any jack would be good as well. Let's see what the dealer puts out there. Bang! He puts the jack of clubs. We have the nuts. What's better than having the nuts when the opponent just rips it all in for $350? Snap call incoming from me and he turns over his hand. Queen jack offsuit. Interesting decision from him just to rip it in there on the river. Obviously I'm going to take it down with a nut broadway straight here and we're going to scoop that $932 pot. Dealer to ship those chips over to me. Next 
Roxanne a note, we looked down at pocket fours from the big blind. The $10 straddle's on and there's two calls to me. I decide to complete here instead of raising it up and the straddle checks his option. Flop comes queen, eight, four, bang, we flop bottom set. I decide to lead out here in this spot given the fact there's a spade draw, any straight draw like 10 jack, nine, 10, they have gutters to a straight, any queen's gonna pay us off as well. So I like my lead here for $25. Only the button puts in the call, so we're heads up to the turn, which comes the five of clubs. Six, seven now gets there having a straight, but we're not even scared about that because the board could pair giving us the best hand. Regardless though, I bet out for $75 into the $97 pot, looking to put pressure on any flush draws or king queen, queen jack, any of those type of hands. Fortunately though, the button does not want to continue. He mucks his cards, but we flop a set and scoop that $100 pot up over $500 on the session. That brings us to the next hand. We look down at ace jack offsuit and I raise it up to $20. The hijack, big blind, and the middle position all put in the call, so going four ways to the flop. Flops rare like Mr. Clean with no hair. It comes king, 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 obviously all different suits. Ace high here might be the best hand, although if one of the three other opponents has a pocket pair, it's unlikely we're gonna get them to fold. So I decided to check and the action checks around. Turn comes the queen of clubs and the action checks around for a second time, bringing the deuce of spades on the river. $80 pot and the action checks to me. Probably could be going for a bet here, but I'm a wuss. I check it over to the hijack who bets $35. When the action folds back around to me, an ace might be good here is what I'm thinking in the moment. Sure, you could have a deuce. Sure, you could have pocket fives and have the best hand but I play this hand like a weirdo, so I'm gonna put in the $35 here and just see what he has. Opponent turns over 8-5 offsuit, that's nothing. He was just trying to take down the pot knowing his eight high could not be good. Sorry sir, my ace high is gonna take down that pot. $150 worth of chips coming my way, and that brings us into this next hand. We look down at my favorite hand, pocket sevens. If you guys watch other poker vloggers and see them playing my hand, pocket sevens and flopping a set, you guys need to comment, bang, that's Wolfgang's hand. Gotta let people know that pocket sevens is the hand of the wolf. You guys played in real life as well. It's undoubtedly the best hand in poker. You can't have this hand and not flop a set. I raise it up to $20 and get five callers. This is setting up nicely here for a seven on the flop. Let's see what the dealer puts out there. Jack, 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 we flop a boat. No set for us, but we still have a boat, which I think is gonna be good a large portion of the time. But against four other players, I decide to check, which brings in the four of clubs on the turn. On the four of clubs turn, I decide to lead out for $20, and we get looked up by the middle position and the cutoff, so we're going three ways to the river. River's an undercard, again, it comes a six of hearts, $160 in the pot, and now I'm gonna go for a check call. Don't really think anyone's gonna pay us off with any other hand like a four. Maybe a six obviously would pay us off now, but I go for a check, middle position checks as well, and the cutoff bets out for $75. Any jack obviously has quads. It's gonna be hard though for a player to have a jack in this spot. So I put in the $75 again, hoping to be right. Middle position gets out of the way and the cutoff unfortunately shows jack six, who he flopped quads. Fortunately for us there, we could not get away from the hand. He's gonna take down the last pot of the night. All right, you guys, that wraps up our session here from Windstar in Oklahoma. We went the hour and a half north from Dallas, ended up booking a $160 win in the 1-2 game, then moved over to the 2-5 and booked $109 win, $269 on the day. Drop a like for that funny number. As always, I appreciate you guys watching this video. Here are the road trip totals. Doing very good so far, over 14K. That's thanks to you guys as well. Drop a like, smash the subscribe. As always, good luck on the felt. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.